Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to today's show. With me today is my good friend and colleague, Carly Banks. And we're going to have a conversation about yet again, like it's no secret on this show that I am trying to get across this message that taking care of ourselves is not at all a selfish act. And in fact, when we do actually put ourselves on our own priority lists and take good care of who we are, that we are leading by example and giving other people permission to take care of themselves. And when it comes to parenting, uh, which is kind of our deep dive today, it takes on this special role because we are, we're role modeling the kind of people that we hope our kids get to become. And so if we are wanting to be present and patient, and yet we are running ourselves ragged and we're exhausted all the time, we just don't have the bandwidth for showing up for the people in our lives the way that we know we could. So Carly and I are going to chat about her journey from being a parent who was fully overwhelmed to someone who is much more connected not only to her kids, but to herself. Carly has been learning about the teachings of Ayurveda as well as the science of habit change and the power of routine. And she leads coaching groups um, and is a real exemplar of how you can create a new normal, not only for yourself, but for your whole family that can have a tremendous ripple effect in a really short amount of time. Carly, welcome to today's show. Awesome to be here. Thanks, Brody. I'd love to just start with that idea that you brought up when you reached out to me to be on the podcast about wanting to raise your kids to be compassionate and present and responsive and understanding, but how we cannot teach what we do not know. (laughs) What did you mean by that? Very early in my daughter's life, I I have two little kids still. My, My daughter is six and a half and my son is almost three. And From a very, very early age, my daughter was teaching me lessons, and uh, it dawned on me through her lessons that that I might ruin her, Brody. (laughs) What a scary thought. (laughs) You know, it's really, really cool to talk and engage with little kids. They are, uh, they're so honest, because that's really the only way they can be. They don't have all that past experience or old stories in their heads that weave the way that they perceive current situations, right? So all they can do is kind of tell it like it is. And what was your daughter telling you? Well, (laughs) my daughter's always been really talkative and she's always been protective of me. And uh, from such a young age, she was telling people things about me. And I remember when my son was just an infant, she turned to one of my friends and said, it's okay that mommy doesn't play with me. She's tired. Oh, wow. That must have been really, really hard to hear. It was. And, you know, my my friend looked at me and she goes, wow, she's really emotionally intelligent. And I thought that's true. And then I realized that I had totally been taking advantage of that fact, Brody. Like it had been months that I'd been crying to my three and a half year old daughter telling her that mommy can't play because she's tired today. And I did it so often that that is what she considered to be normal in her life. And good for you for picking up on the fact that you were, you were teaching her this lesson that you didn't want her to learn Mm -hmm. in time to undo it, because I know that you have. Yeah, it really, that conversation triggered a, a long list of the things that that my child was considering normal in her days. I mean, as a new mom, we can get so upside down. Fatigue leads to so much dis-ease. I, I was constantly putting her in front of the television so that I could sleep. I was holding a lot of resentment toward my husband as well as the kids. So carrying a lot, around a lot of anger. So mom, she was watching mommy be angry 
She was eating a lot of mac and cheese. Resentment around your um, the the shared responsibilities of parenting. Yeah, certainly around yeah around my my sense of overwhelm that it, we convert emotions in so many interesting ways when we're tired, right? Well, and I think it's super common for resentment to build in direct proportion inversely to our unmet needs. Yeah, but uh, it's I'm very thankful to have learned through tr- the traditions of Ayurveda that my goodness, my needs can be met by myself. Yeah, and uh, I now honestly apologize to my husband for making the assumption that he should fulfill all of my needs. Awesome. Well, the 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 idea that new parents or you know parents who had small children are pretty much destined to be exhausted is like a cultural, it's a cultural assumption, right? Like that basically you get a pass on, on being anything other than stressed and exhausted all the time. If you have kids under five. Yeah. Isn't that sad? It it really, it's become something that's on trend. I've seen so many little advertisements or articles uh, on social media of late those letters to mom saying, mommy, I see you there crying behind the bathroom door. I see you with your child crying in the grocery store, looking like you're about to have a tantrum on the floor too. And I get it. I'm right there with you. I don't think that having this sort of tone is is helping the situation by turning it into a trend. It's not uh, not helping us get past it. Yeah, on the one hand, like yes to compassion for, yeah. for the fact that like it is a real struggle. I've never had small children. I became an insta parent to an eight-year-old and a twelve-year-old, so I missed that whole stage, but had to learn a lot in a very short amount of time about what I was role modeling. But that that's a story for another another time. Uh, but the, the that idea that like yeah that that it can feel like your whole world is is this relentless, exhausting struggle, and at the same time like you were buying into it and then you weren't. And I'm really curious as to how you were able to shift things. Yeah, I would so love to share some of my uh, my tools and tricks because this is the beautiful thing about, about Ayurveda and I'm sure you've experienced so much yourself and with, with your clients, it's the silliest, smallest, most simple little shifts that we can make to our daily routines to just align us with daily rhythm and allow us to give our physiology a break and provide ourselves with more consistent energy. So I would think this resonates with most young moms, but I remember being so exhausted through the evening and just feeling like I couldn't wait for the kids to go to bed and I would tuck them in and finally close their doors And I would walk into the living room and lay down on the couch and watch Netflix for two hours. And that was you time. That was, yep. That was my self-care me time. Watching episode after episode with, through squinted eyes, feeling so exhausted, headache constantly, body aching, body literally screaming to go to bed. And I thought that what I was doing was getting my time to myself and, you know, engaging in that kind of entertainment. I learned that, well, first of all, there's the, there's the whole blue screen of death scientific research showing us the that. blue screen of melatonin disruption. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. The, uh, our, our tech is not serving us in the evenings. It's blocking the production of melatonin. And so I wasn't doing myself any favors. I wasn't able to fall asleep when I finally got into bed. And when I woke up for night feedings or for whatever reason, I was unable to go back to sleep. And turning off my technology or my screen two hours before bedtime was like, that's my number one thing that I say to moms. It was my savior. It was 72 hours after doing that. And I was back to a regular sleep rhythm. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's really incredible. And that is really one of those simple shifts that may be like really hard to actually implement because 
because there is this feeling of like, I do so much for everyone else. And like, what, you know, when do I just get to relax and lie on the couch? So, so did you miss that? No, because it turns out when you tap into your body's request to go to sleep and you actually go to sleep, I mean, as a new mom, I am all for going to sleep at eight o'clock if that's what your body's asking for. You've just gone through such a massive physical transformation. You've depleted yourself entirely. If you need a year, two years to get yourself right, then I'm totally all for that. So I was listening to my body's requests and I was going to bed at 8.30, uh, asleep at, by nine o'clock always. And I just started waking up at 5.30. And that time in the morning, and they've done brain research on this, and, and they've proven that between 4 and 6 a.m., that's when your mind is at its most creative. Your thoughts and focus is at its most clear. And so I was waking up a couple hours before my kids, and I was making silk flower crowns and doing watercolor paintings and journaling and just doing all kinds of self-care practices that were really filling my cup from a place of feeling energized, not feeling completely depleted. And it really just changed everything. This episode is brought to you by the coaching branch of BrodyWelch.com. If you are interested in getting off of your plateau, I have three opportunities for you. One is to join a community of like-minded people who similarly want to get more calm, more confident, be in the bodies that they love, show up differently in the world, and start really living from their truth. My Level Up community starts again in January. And if you're interested, you can head to brodywelch.com level up page and apply. Also, there is room in the Mexico retreat in February for a few more people. So if you could use a retreat that gets you connected to yourself, as well as giving you tons of self-care tools for your toolbox going forward, check that out as well. And three, I'm opening up time in my schedule for a handful of the right one-on-one -on -one clients for coaching for people who are interested in getting off their plateau with kind of a combination of both health coaching and life coaching from a Chinese medicine framework. So again, all the self-care tools and empowerment support accountability that you could get in a group, but with some more personalized recommendations from me. And uh, if you're interested, head to brodywelch.com, go to the level up page and apply to have a conversation with me and we'll see if it's a good fit. Now back to the show. We talk a lot about self care, and what you're talking about is really more like self actualization. You know, like that you're you're doing the things that allowed you to feel creative and to feel like a human being who existed in a role other than a parent. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, you definitely hit the nail on the head there. That I spent quite a lot of time postpartum feeling like I had lost myself or that there was no room for me, and. I found myself again, thanks to uh, finding my sleep and finding a little bit of space in the mornings. And I love that example because basically you traded spending two hours of time on Netflix for more energy, deeper sleep, and access to this magic window of time in the early morning where you could easily tap into a state of flow and get your creativity back that allows you to feel like yourself again. And that is like, that is, it's the same two hours, right? That it's, and, and, and yet investing it, you know, like it, you went from, from spending it in a depleting way to it actually giving back to you in what I would assume is be, would be like, many times over. Yeah, absolutely. It's incredible. It was such a small price to pay for, for getting my sense of self back. And that's really what I appreciate about a lot of the habits of an Ayurvedic lifestyle is that it's a very small shift and no, it's not easy, but really all that's required is letting go of the cultural norms. Our society has created a monster. You know, yeah. right. In so many ways. Well, and, and it also, yeah, like what you were saying earlier, that life feels easier when you are aligned with natural rhythms. 
the more that we learn about circadian medicine, the more that we know that that the body actually does have these peak times where we ideally could be doing particular activities to make it easier. That it's just something as simple as going to bed before 10 and getting up before the dawn is part of that natural rhythm. Simple shift, massive result. That's it. I'm curious how your inner dialogue changed as well. That's been another really fascinating thing in, in making these little shifts and bringing my body to a place where it has time to digest my food, for example. We now are closing our kitchen at 6 p.m. I used to be a night snacker. And this was another thing that added to my brain fog big time. I would wake up very cranky, very depleted in the morning. And by dialing back my supper time and closing my kitchen at six, I gave my body room to digest my, my food. And the happy side effect of that is, is that my body is also now digesting my, my feelings and my thoughts and my experiences. I wake with a feeling of being restored every day. And there's no question in my mind uh, in terms of the connection between the gut and the brain at this point, because when I give my digestive tract room to restore and digest and replenish its cells, I, I wake with a feeling of, of lightness in the mind. Oh, I love that you brought that up. It's a truism in Chinese medicine as well that like the organs of digestion, the spleen and stomach are responsible also for digesting our life experience. And so, yeah, like giving that a break, letting there be space can lead to just a less of a backlog, less undigested sludge that clouds the mind and mires us in the past. Yeah, absolutely. And I think my little people, my, my children were such a support in shifting my perspective when I started to experience some more energy because of my new sleep rhythms. My daughter right away started to comment on how much happier mommy is and how much fun she has with mommy. And that is so motivating in itself. No kidding. I mean, talk about like hacking the habit loop to create a reward. <laughs> you know, that, that's what keeps habits going is we need to feel either an intrinsic or an extrinsic reward from doing it. And having, having your daughter give you that positive feedback must have been just awesome. It's been really, really cool to watch their experience of me and, and these new normals that I'm establishing in our household. Like now I'm doing self-care habits such as talking to myself in the mirror, telling myself that I love myself in the mirror, to let myself know that I'm that I'm supporting myself, things like this. And and now I walk into my daughter's room and she's doing it. She's saying nice things to herself in the mirror. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. I love that. Like she, <laughs> she's growing up with this really kind inner dialogue and and really embodying self-respect. Totally, totally. When I when I go upstairs, I, I, I've got my office here upstairs in my home and I was headed upstairs recently and I said to my son he, that I, mommy's going to do some work and he goes, oh, you're going to go do your yoga, mommy? Like mm. that is his understanding of what I do for work. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and <laughs> it's so it's, there's just so many little things like that, that it's just such a massive shift from that day when she said, mommy can't play today. Yesterday, Ivy drew a picture of me and she handed it to me and it was a picture of a rainbow. And I was sitting on top of the rainbow with the sun shining down on me and hearts everywhere. And she said, this is you sitting in namaste. And there's all this love around you. Oh. And I was That's so like, <laughs> Of course. <laughs> well, I feel so honored to have brought them to this place of self-understanding and, and pride in, in, in their mommy, you know? That's so great. And, and the idea of doing your yoga by going to work, I would say is not too far off, right? I mean, it's not like your, your physical yoga practice is, is your work, but you are, you know, to yoga has that meaning of union, right? And to be, or to be yoked. And so you're very yoked to your Dharma. You are yoked to your work and, 
as uh, anyone who has tried to walk an entrepreneurial path knows, it's a very fast path to personal development. So I would say you are doing your yoga when you go to work. (laughs) Thank you. It's true. (laughs) I have seen you post some truly adorable videos of you doing your morning yoga practice with your kids. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you get them involved in some of the habits that you rely on. I think this is absolutely imperative to uh, a mom's success. When I think back to the way we were doing things before, not having a meal plan, for example, meant that every night I was coming home and feeling stressed about what I was going to make, then triggering a stress response. And so I wasn't able to be that present with my children. I'd end up putting them in front of the television so that I could quickly put something together. But now it's so much different. We we come together as a family. I've got, I have planned my meals. I've got all the ingredients that I need. The kids come to the counter. They They each pull up their chairs and we all take part in creating our meals. And it's got them so much happier about eating the food that I am serving to them because they get to help. And there's just been such a group dynamic shift in encouraging them to engage in everything that I am doing. I think there was a mental blockage there thinking that I was never doing what they wanted to do when in truth, they really just want to do whatever I'm doing. So right. they want to be with you. Yeah. So whether I'm juicing or doing yoga or sitting in silence, they, they sit and meditate with me. That's so great. <laughs> the, the idea that moms or parents in general have to be servants of children is this other cultural thing that I've never personally understood, you know, like I, at all. And, um, I have a sister who's a Montessori school teacher and she she has mentioned to me that basically if a kid is old enough to do something for themselves and you're not letting them do it for themselves, that you're actually inhibiting their educational development. That mindset shift, I think, is really helpful for a lot of parents who are still feeling like guilty about like, oh, well, I'm making them like peel potatoes or, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> participate in in um, in meal planning when really, like, as you just said, they don't see it as work. They don't have this baggage around it. They just see it as spending time together. Totally. It's a disservice not to. And now it's just become what is normal. So there's no more arguments about it, of course. But when it comes to the more fun activities like the yoga, (laughs) Ivy and Hayden have watched me do this every morning for so long that now it's easy for me to ask Ivy to lead me in a yoga practice. And children have such an intuitive sense of what's a good stretch. They're kind of like animals in the wild, right? You see them kind of stretching in all different directions. And she really leads me through some incredible sequences. Awesome. (laughs) I'm so proud of my six-year-old yoga teacher daughter. (laughs) Have you thought of filming them and and, and, uh, having that available to other parents with kids? Because I I could see a market there. (laughs) We actually, we held a local workshop on Saturday and she, uh, yeah, there was 12 moms and kids there and she, she showed them how it's done. But <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It, but it's just such a great way to engage and, and, and especially when there's self-care involved. And now I've got really cool exchanges happening with them. After supper, they help me unload and load the dishwasher every night. And in exchange, I'm giving them oil massages. I'm massaging them with sesame oil, their legs in the evening, which is giving them a better sleep at night and everybody wins. That is awesome. I love it. Um, Do you want to say a bit about why that helps with better sleep? Um, Obviously that's an Ayurvedic practice. Um, We've, we've done episodes on self-massage in the past, but for people who's like, how does that work? (laughs) Well, certainly it invites your body into um, a resting response instead of that fight or flight we're moving into rest and digest response so we you physically move the energy down and out of your body when you rub from the heart downward you're allowing energy to come all the way down and out your feet and it uh, it invites deep relaxation and your kids are into it they love it and they they've come to the point ivy does it quite well herself hayden still gets oil everywhere but 
That's what towels are for. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Good. Good to have a designated oil towel, no matter how old you are, when you yeah. do some massage. <laughs> and to me, like I just laugh when I think about this. Like my kids think that is totally normal for the family to get out a big towel and sit on the living room floor and rub ourselves down with oil. <laughs> That's such an excellent family tradition. I <laughs> kind of wish that that's like what happened at Thanksgiving or like <laughs> Can you imagine like the cross generational celebrations that would be involved if everybody just kind of hanging out, giving each other foot massages or doing self massage. Amazing. Be very <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, any other routines that you do as a family? Definitely uh, dance parties every single night. We turn on loud music after dinner and we dance around. We get outside every single day for at least 20 minutes. Fantastic. And those are pretty, sounds like getting, first of all, syncing up with nature and natural light, but also getting them into their bodies, getting them moving and having fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I spent so long, it's so easy to become disconnected from the kids. And it's so easy, especially with smartphones and social media to take that time in the evening away from each other. And yeah. it's such an easy excuse to say, okay, we're going to relax. So here's your TV shows and I'm going to sit and scroll on my phone. But I can't believe all these moments I was missing Brody. Like I am having so much fun with them. They are hilarious. They are intelligent. They are so wise. And I was missing it for years. I was totally missing it. And you also, it could have been many, many, many more years before you realized that. So your kids, your kids, just to call that out, like because of your practice, because of your ability to look at yourself and, and reflect on what you were seeing reflected back to you, you were able to start making those changes that led to small changes that led to big shifts. And that's awesome. That's how miracles happen. Absolutely. And it is one. Carly, you are a living example of a woman who is a parent and running her own business and doing it with energy integrity. And I have massive respect for that. If people out there are listening and can relate and want to connect with you, how do they do that? Uh, well, you can subscribe to, I've got a blog going at www.thehabit.net. Or you can check me out on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash thehabit.net. I'm also on Instagram at happy healthy habit. Carly, thanks so much for joining me in this conversation today. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Brody. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You can also head to BrodyWelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.